Well, hi boys and girls. It's Bob in one KPR. <sighs> Sitting here in the basement waiting for the blizzard to come. I'm going to get 10 to 15 inches of that white stuff. So, uh, uh, we're just killing time here. We got the snow blower ready and uh, off we go. Winter in New England. Anyhow, we've been uh, we've been playing around with loop antennas for quite a while, and I built a bunch of box loops and uh, uh, one meter or three foot box loops and so on, and uh, a couple of compacts. I copied the Turk Advantage. The Turk Advantage is a pretty good device. It's small uh, for a proximity loop, you know, something you're not going to have outside. Uh, but I decided let's. Uh, Let's get into this thing and maximize it a little bit. I'm concerned primarily with the uh, AM bin right now. But uh, anyhow, you can go uh, you can go down into long wave and you can go up into the uh, HF band a little bit. But for now, we're going to do MF. Anyhow, I've got this. Uh, I got my uh, pointer. This. Uh, 8 inch ferrite rod. I think I got it off eBay. I believe they're from Russia, but <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, 200 millimeters, 8 inches. And uh, I have this. Well, I have been using it. Lighting is terrible. Uh, but I've been using uh, for the past couple of years now, instead of variable capacitors, I'm using uh, BAT. Uh, varistors and the reason is uh, they're so much more convenient um, other places here on uh, I'm having trouble I'm trying to do too much at once other uh, videos I have here have this uh, varistor thing and uh, let's see if we look back here you look back, you'll see my uh, pre-selector thing where I've got uh, the six uh, chokes. And uh, that covers, as a pre-selector, that covers uh, well past uh, 32 megs. And way, way down, look at that bad boy there, 100 millihenries. Uh, I've got that video here, and it works really well. So I said, you know what? I'm going to use this technology, but I'm going to use that uh, the varistor component instead of the uh, air variables, which to me, eh, I don't know. Don't get mad at me, guys, but I think they're uh, <laughs> a little bit obsolete. They're good in certain cases. Uh, don't don't send me any bad uh, emails. What I did was I took. Uh, the two varistors, anode to anode, across uh, the 330 microhenry coil. Uh, it's 330 because that's what will tune within this range. I think we're good from about 5 or 10 PFs up to 300 and something. But if you look at the chart, the chart, what I did here... Uh, we're starting down here at uh, in kilohertz, uh, around 500 here, and we want to get up to 2 megs. So we go up the line, here's the cap, this is what the Varactor will do. Did I say Varistor before? <laughs> it's a Varactor, and it's, uh, I gave it a little uh, conservative leeway here, I want a little more than 10 puffs, it'll go down below. And um, it'll go out beyond uh, 300, uh, probably 400, I don't know. The reason, uh, oh, and okay, so here's, uh, here's the choke uh, requirement that we wanted, which, if you look at this chart, is 330. Here's 100, here's 500, this 330. And you can see how they intersect it as they come down here. Uh, to the 500 and 2 megs thing. Alright. 
Uh, again, go look at my uh, my pre-selector videos, and you'll be able to uh, uh, freeze frame and uh, copy out some of this stuff if you want to. Um, so what I did was, if you want to do this remote and put the stupid thing outside, you could do it with a little diplexer here, a little bias T. And you can grab that if you like. But here's the actual circuit. And uh, this would be the part that's in the house. But the purpose of this video is to show you this guy. And here we are. I'm having a lot of trouble with this production today. Let's see if that's any better. All right. You want to come in with 9 volts, not more, maybe 10, into a very high level pot. I'm using 100K. You could use 1 meg even if you want. Another 1 meg to bias feed the uh, varistors. Let's say it again. Varactors, Bob. Anode to anode, bring the cathodes down. This cathode goes to ground to make this thing work. This cathode goes to ground too through the coil to make that side work. But since they're in series, you're going to have half the value of what a normal one would do. I think they're good out to six or seven hundred puffs. But in this configuration, you're going to get three or four hundred. So, uh, and of course, that's in parallel with the winding that's right there. And it'll focus eventually on this 8-inch uh, ferrite rod. I don't know how many turns that is, but keep winding till you get to 330 microhenries. Uh, and then I'm bringing that down here through the clip leads. Get that out of the way. The yellow and black. I'm bringing them down to the two varistors. Let me turn them. Again, the lighting really terrible. Sorry, guys. There's the two varistors, the biasing, one meg biasing resistor, and out at the end of all this is the uh, 100k or one meg pot that tunes. Now, let me go back to, uh, where's my notes? We go back to here to the chart I found in tuning around today uh, with this configuration 330 microhenries and uh, the two back to back uh, varistors, by uh, <laughs> for actors. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> they uh, they will resonate this system from 440 kilohertz to 2 megs. I originally had a, uh, an ancillary coil on there that brought me down to 310 kilohertz. I said, you know what, for this project, we're going to use the KISS principle and keep it simple. And I got rid of the low frequency one. Um, but there you are. You can figure out any, uh, any coil combination you want. You're fixed with the uh, Veractor. I said it right that time. Um, Remember this, common ground all windings, and I'll explain that. Here's the 330 microhenry, here's the pickup coil. Of course, we're dealing in, we want this dead center in the, uh, the core, because we're establishing a loop that's over the top. Boop, 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 see the loop? So no matter how you call it, either current versus voltage or voltage versus current, doesn't matter. You want to be down here with the pickup coil at the end of for, for maximum signal transfer, energy transfer, at the end of the rod, either end. That is clip leaded to the coax that feeds the radio. They're feeding the radio with this thing. Maybe get a little better perspective here. So you can see, here's the system. Very simple. Uh, the resonating coil, the pickup coil, and the pickup coil going directly to the varactor. Uh, now, what is the rest of that stuff? That's power supply. I'm coming in here 
you can come in here with uh, 12 volts AC or DC. It doesn't matter. I'm going into a, a little bridge and a cap for filtering. This is a regulator I've got set up to do from zero to uh, 9 or 10 volts. I think 9 volts. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, 7809. And then some more filtering out here just to keep things nice and clean. And uh, this is the voltage divider. It appears right here. So I'm just taking, now you can use a battery if you want. Come in here with 9 volts. Nice, got to be clean. Uh, again, high impedance in this area. So we want 100K or 1 meg. And come down and bias these guys. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm choking on my coffee here. Uh, again, they're Varactors. Uh, they're uh, BB-112s. The ferrite rod's a 200 millimeter 8 inch thing. Um, I slid the, the windings around and uh, my theory proved correct. You want this 330 in the center and this 3 to 4 turn. I've got actually a 5 turns on. It didn't make any difference. I wouldn't go any more because of the higher frequencies involved. But between 3 and 5 turns on the pickup, these are on the end. Uh, what did I write there? Three to four turns. Okay. So I'm not lying to you. And uh, there you are. And this thing works. Now, let me quickly, because I'm going long again. Bob, you're doing it again. Uh, let me go up to the radio there. I've got a local guy. And you can see we're almost dead air. Not much going on. And I'm going to be turning this pot. Well, I'm showing you the S meter, or single strength meter. I'm turning it up. up. Look at that. I'm, tur I just, I'm still going up, turn right past through it. Back and down, I don't think it's the peak. Okay. I'm below it. I just went above it and through it. All right. Now, if you come out to the pot and look at it, See that little mark on there? This is 960 on the AM dial, and that line is almost straight up, which would be 1 meg. So it's calibrated. <laughs> the silly thing is uh, it's calibrated. And it works. Of course, you could do nulls with this. Um, the only reason that you would want to do a null is to find out where the station is, so then you could turn it broadside to the station and pick it up. All right. A little extra information. This arrangement is about 15 or 20 dB less than, uh, well, actually, it's about 20 dB less than uh, my long wire uh, 160 meter ham antenna, my transmitting antenna, which I'm using as a reference. That's about, it's about, uh, well, I'm going to say it's 7 to 1. Now, not most people don't have a 160 meter antenna in their backyard. Or most SWLs or AM guys, that is. Yeah, some hams do, of course, but uh, that's a pretty darn good antenna for AM broadcast DXing. This thing is about 7 to 1 under that, or 1 7th the signal. So, what does that mean? Well, you've got an AGC circuit in your receiver and all that, so don't don't be you know it's it's uh, it's urban legend that the more more is better. What you want is just clean, noise-free signal. Let the radio amplify it up for you. If if you're really uh, concerned about it and you want to get fancy, here's a little uh, here's a 15 dB amplifier I made. Very simple. That's good from DC to, uh, I don't know, up into the FM band and beyond. It's up into VHF. But it's 15 dB. Just a simple little uh, thing. And you can find this circuit, by the way, is here too. It's a two-transistor circuit. Look for that on YouTube if you're interested. Oh, what's 15 dB? That's about 7 to 1. I plugged it into here. I unsoldered the pickup things, fed them into the uh, 
the preamp, ran the preamp into the radio through here. Uh, I recovered 15 dB. We, we lost about 20 or 19 or 18. So the difference was like nothing. So you could actually make this thing perform like a 160 meter outdoor antenna, which is up 40 feet out there. Really good AM antenna. Uh, so if there's any doubts about signal strength, don't worry about it. When you're testing this, if you got a receiver that you can turn the AGC off, you do that and you can move these things around just to prove that you want this one near the end, you want this one dead center. Um, they slide. You see it. Just wrap a piece of paper around and glue the silly things on there. And you can get it the way you like it, but uh, start with that. Get that in the middle, get that on the end, you'll be doing fine. And you'll be uh, 15 or 20 dB down from a big, big outdoor antenna. Really works well. Oh, but I should mention, I'm in the cellar on top of that. I'm like seven feet underground right now. And that's how well this works compared to the outdoor antenna. I guess if I was upstairs in the family room, that 7 dB, uh, 18 dB difference, 7 to 1, uh, that would probably be a big a big increase. And I'm going to guess probably maybe 3 or 4 to 1, like 12 dB difference. So anyhow, there you are. I went real long. Bob, in one KPR in my site. The, the, the Bob's America .com. Take a look through YouTube. Get the circuits you need. Uh, you'll see. You'll see that circuit in its prototype stages. Go ahead and take a look at it if you're interested. Uh, and you'll see uh, how we did. Look at some of the pre-selector videos, and you'll see how we did this thing too. Been a lot of fun. <coughs> now it's lunchtime here at the shack. So thanks for watching. Uh, Give me a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't, yeah, it's Christmas time. You know, be nice, okay? Uh, N1 KPR on YouTube. Thanks very much for looking and have a great holiday. Beautiful Christmas, New Year's, everything. Stay COVID free, guys. Bye bye.